I'm Ashlyn and my husband is Zach and we are traveling A to Z. This month we're in Quebec, Canada and we're doing everything you could do in the winter. And this is where the funicular is. And then here's kind of the old town where all the, the water and the boats and the St. Lawrence River is. And then up here is kind of the newer of the old town uh, where you have the different churches. And then you could see, we're all the way around. It's kind of cool. Um, that is the walled city. So behind me is the funicular. So we are actually in the new part of the old town of Quebec. And you go down the funicular and that's the old part. And that's by the water area. And that's where we're heading now. So this is the bottom of the funicula. This cute area we're in right now is called the Quarter Petit Champlain. Uh, Champlain is actually the guy who founded this area. He came from uh, France and it was, I think, established in 1608 is when uh, they made this an area. This is the oldest town in North America, north of Mexico. Walking here in town makes me feel like I'm in a Christmas movie with the snow and the old buildings. It's so cool. Mm. They call Native Americans First Nations, and so they basically are the people that helped everyone survive uh, when the French came over to this area. But they were the ones that developed uh, snowshoes. Up the hill from Old Town, you have the New Town. There's a lot of churches up here. You also have this restaurant which houses the oldest house in Quebec City still around and then there's an old school and a whole bunch of other older buildings. When you visit Quebec City, the Fairmont Front Knock is the centerpiece of the city skyline. I recommend stopping by and visiting because it is gorgeous inside. The Fairmont La Chateau Frontenac is a hotel in Quebec City in the old town of Quebec. It was built in 1893 by the Canada Pacific Railway to help encourage tourism across Canada. The locals call this hotel the castle. The architecture style is used throughout this hotel is actually a template for other Canadian Grand Railway hotels. So most of the hotels look very similar. The Hotel Frontenac is considered the most photographed hotel in the world and actually is one genus book of world records because of it. Right outside of the castle there is the famous toboggan ride. This toboggan is supposed to be one of the oldest attractions in Quebec uh, City. It was started in 1884 and it goes up to 70 kilometers per hour. Since it's snowing they recommend two people on it to go a little faster because the snow uh, but the friction slows it down. But we're heading up. Here we go. <laughs> we're tobogging. Get ready. Yeah. Oh, this is so fun. Riding the toboggan and seeing the Fairmont is a must do when you're in the area. So that is the tram you take behind me to go into the falls. And then there's like, right now we're at the viewpoint. Don't see the waterfall yet, but I can hear it. Mount Morency Waterfall is a large waterfall on the Mount Morency River in Quebec, Canada. It is 276 feet tall or 84 meters, 30 meters higher than Niagara Falls. So we just took the tram from the parking lot down to the bottom of the falls and we're going to walk to uh, Mount Morency Falls and check it out. Great. Very nice. We're going to risk it so you can walk along the, the water to the waterfall. Because half of the waterfall is frozen, the other half is still running. So you have on this side that's frozen, people 
actually um, ice climbing, which is pretty cool. I've never seen that before, up the, the waterfall. And then you have this side that's just beautiful and still flowing. This big pile behind us, I think it's missed off the waterfall and made its own snow. Cable car, now we're gonna head back up to the top of the falls and walk across the suspension bridge. So we're at to the top of the waterfall. They have a nice little trail. Right now we're on the suspension bridge so you can overlook the whole waterfall from the top. winter uh, carnival or festival. This happens every February for about 10 days. It started in 1955 and they have different activities all around. Behind me is the ice castle. We're gonna go wander around and find the other areas because they're like four different areas. There's supposed to be ice sculptures everywhere, ice sleds, ice activities, a whole bunch of stuff. It is extremely popular here. It's the world's biggest winter festival. So these are all the parade floats. They usually have a parade because of the C word. The parades were canceled. So they still have some of the floats that you can go walk on and explore and see. So as you walk around town, there's ice sculptures pretty much every like 100 feet where the main area where the carnival is. It's pretty neat. They're all different designs. We just saw a boar, there's an alien, there's uh, or just a whole bunch of stuff. There's also a whole bunch of snow sculptures around. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next stop. One of the sections at the carnival has a lot of fun games. They have Dance Dance Revolution, hockey, axe throwing, and much more. So here's the slide part. It's pretty tall. Going in the castle made out of ice. So they change this castle or palace every year. And this year it's supposed to be California Villa themed. And this is supposed to be where the, the mascot or the snowman lives. They call him Bon Homie. Oh, that's pretty neat. So we are currently at Hotel Val Qatar. We're in Quebec, uh, Canada, outside of Quebec, about 30 miles, and we're at this resort. So this resort is um, known for tubing, water slides, uh, has restaurants, just kind of an all-inclusive uh, family resort. Here on the site, they also have Hotel Glace, and this is the Ice Hotel. So this is the tube park. So it's a two park that looks like a ski area, but it's actually a two park. How cool is this? And they have it marked by difficulty of tubing, just like a ski area. That's how it's fun. On the property, there's also an ice hotel which you could tour or stay at. This is the ice hotel behind me. They work on this in about December and continue through January. It's different every single year. It only is up for about three months total. So the guys, there's about 40 people that build this over about six weeks. And when they build this, they have 15 people that are the ice sculpture people. The hotel took 8,000 hours of work to make this. It uses over 15,000 tons of ice and snow to build it. And it's over 35,000 square foot. Some of these blocks of snow were up to 300 pounds. And you could see all the lighting. It was six kilometers wire to make this place light up. That's impressive. And they're all like waterproof. So it's crazy because this takes six weeks to make, but only five hours to take apart. It has 24 different rooms and some are themed, some are not. Um, the first ice hotel was actually built in uh, 2001. So the temperature stays between zero and eight degrees because of the walls being about two feet thick. So it keeps it a steady temperature. 
If you're in Quebec during the winter time, I definitely recommend stopping by this resort. This is us getting ready to go on the gondola. Time to start the day. There are multiple ski areas around Quebec and it's one of the top things to do in the winter. So we are currently at Le Mastiff de Charvillet, which is a ski area outside of Quebec City in Quebec, Canada. So this ski resort is the tallest ski resort east of the Rockies and it's one of the steepest ones. This is where athletes actually train. They have a ski lift here or run that's 64% grade. Um, not exactly the most beginner mountain. Uh, they have a lot of blues, blacks, and double blacks here. Uh, decent mountain though. The snow has been great. Um, kind of a, almost like a sandy powdery type of snow versus the west coast, which is more of a wet snow. So it's been kind of interesting to ski here. So not the biggest mountain, but definitely pretty good. We are going dog sledding in the back country of Quebec. So they have 180 dogs here and they all run about four times a day and they love to run. How fun. Zach's gonna drive first! <laughs> I'm, I'm a little scared now, but the dog seems super excited. We got the big dogs. So we've never done this before. So they, they basically sh said you could step in the middle and break them both or you could step on one side and kind of like slow them down. And then you're supposed to, if like we're going up a hill, you can get off and kind of like help them. We're dog sledding with bat in front of us. This is pretty cool. I'm just standing here along for the ride. The dogs know where they're going because there's a little track. I have no control whatsoever. I can't steer them at all. Except for the brake. You better brake. Yeah, I can put on the brake, but that's about it. These dogs like want to run so bad. Like they're like... They could go so fast. They're like trying so hard to go fast. And like Zach's literally just stepping on the brake because we keep running in the person in front of us. Our dogs are way stronger than everybody else's dogs. We have the strong dogs because... Apparently a lot of the people are having to get out and push. Our dogs are so strong that they're able to like, we just have to keep on the brake the whole time. <laughs> this is so pretty though. And this is fun. It's quiet. Like, this is so quiet. Yeah, really quiet. So we learned there's five dogs. So the top, the first two are the lead and they don't, they're just the smart dogs. The middle is the one that doesn't get along with the dogs and it doesn't matter if they're strong or not. And then the, the ones close to the sled, the two ones are the work dogs and they're the ones that pull the sled and do the best. So, very cool. The big white one is super mean. He wants to fight with all the other dogs, but he can pull really hard. Just by himself, he was pulling the sled, like trying to lunge, trying to attack the other dogs. <laughs> I'm driving a sled. Well, I'm not driving a sled. I'm holding on and doing the brake. The, do the dogs are driving the sled. I was really nervous when we first started. This is so much fun. It's quiet, it's peaceful. So we are going snowmobiling. We just got all our stuff out. And it should be, it should be fun. We'll see. And here's our gear they let us use. We're excited. So lots of gear. Okay, start your engine. On the snowmobile tour, we have a guide that we follow. They also teach you how to use and drive the snowmobile and give you pointers along the way. We're in the back country of Quebec. We're taking a break from our ski doing. On our snowmobile tour, it was about three to four hours long and we went about 65 kilometers or over 40 miles. It was so much fun. We're heading to the National Park. 
outside of Quebec City. It's supposed to be a very nice national park. I don't know how to say it, Jacques Cartier National Park, but it's gorgeous. It is known for their snowshoeing, fat, bi fat bike riding, uh, cross country skiing and hiking during the winter. So we're going to Les Cascades. Apparently there's a couple good crampon packed snow hikes we could do. Uh, this one's supposed to be around four kilometers. So that's a little less than three miles. So probably around two and a half miles. And it's supposed to go around a lake. And then there's another one that's closer to the exit of the park um, that's a little longer. They said it was Epron, which is five kilometers. That's supposed to have gorgeous views. I think they said they had over 74 kilometers of hiking trails for the winter. We found the river. It's really pretty. It's all covered with snow and ice, and I thought maybe you could walk on it. But yeah, they have a sign that says you could die, so we're not going to. So it's probably 20 degrees out. I think it said it was negative seven or eight degrees uh, Celsius when we came. And we are taking our hats off, our gloves off. It's hot hiking. I don't think I've really hiked in the snow before. It's kind of like hiking in the sand. It's a lot of work. Hiking up the hill was worth it once we got to the top. The views are amazing. Now we're gonna head back to the parking lot. So this national park is pretty close to Quebec City. It's probably about an hour drive. It's really nice. It's one of the top national parks and outdoor stuff to do when you're staying in Quebec City. I definitely recommend it. It's been a fun little adventure hiking uh, this area and you could rent a lot of the stuff if you're here in the winter, such as snowshoes or crampons if you want. If you go to the visitor center, you could rent them. If it's a busy um, time of the month, I recommend uh, reserving them online. So we're currently outside of Quebec City and we are visiting the St. Anne Basilica. This is a Catholic church that is approximately 30 kilometers or 19 miles east of Quebec City. It is one of the five national shrines of Canada. It is an important Catholic sanctuary and receives about a half a million pilgrims each year. This church has been credited by the Catholic Church with many miracles of curing the sick and disabled. The peak period of pilgrimage is around July 26. As you enter into the basilica, there are pillars in the front entrance that are covered by crutches. they are crutches from people who are said to be miraculously cured and saved. The church is 299 feet tall or 91 meters. It is approximately 344 feet or 105 meters in length. In this church, they have 52 religious subjects reflecting Jesus' life. It also has 14 sculptures of crosses. The church has beautiful pillars and a lot of gorgeous stained glass throughout the whole basilica. This is a very beautiful church outside the city of Quebec. If you're in the area, I recommend stopping by for a look or for a tour. We decided to go ride the ferry across the Lawrence River in the ice and snow because it sounded fun. So here we are. We're getting on the, on the boat right now. We're in the old town of Quebec and we're going to go across the Lawrence River to the other city. We're moving. We're going across the river. So right now there's a bunch of ice floating by. We're on the Lawrence River and that's actually going upstream. It's because with the tides, the tide is so big here, it's actually forcing all that water to go inland against the current. So that ice is floating upriver right now. In about six hours, it's gonna turn around and go back the other direction. And it's really moving fast. It's probably going like five miles an hour or four knots. I don't know, it's cool. And the tides are like 12 feet high, so it goes up and down like 12 feet. The French came over the Atlantic and they came through the Lawrence River and then they ended up here in this uh, eastern part of Canada. 
and they established Quebec City um, because it was it had a waterway and so they were using um, this waterway for trade and that was their main uh, source so they dug this area a little deeper because of trade so the river is dug quite deep here and it's really wide in Quebec as it goes towards the Great Lakes into Montreal it narrows and gets a lot um, shallower so uh, it's really hard to navigate but I guess they have when cruise ships come by uh, they have a different pilot that changes in Quebec City so they have a specialist to um, navigate the, the narrow uh, Lawrence River all the way up to Montreal. So we're gonna go to the Quebec Aquarium and they have polar bears. They have two indoor buildings and two, three outdoor sections. So we are gonna head to the outdoor section first. So the aquarium in Quebec is about 40% uh, outside and 60% inside. So we just kind of went around and saw all the outside things, the, um, the walruses, the seals, the polar bears. We're gonna search for the Arctic fox. Um, and then we're gonna go inside and check out the aquarium. And these are all animals that are uh, found in Canada. Look at the Arctic fox, how cute is he? Oh my gosh. These are really cute. I don't think I've ever seen an Arctic fox before. Inside the aquarium, there's over 10,000 different species and 300 species of mammals, including exotic fish, invertebrates, amphibians, and reptiles. There's also a huge 350,000 liter tank that you could dive in. So now we're gonna go to the saltwater part of the St. Lawrence River where they mix because the St. Lawrence River goes into the Great Salt Lakes and also into the Atlantic. That's a big starfish and an enemy. It's the walking tube. Okay, we're heading to the second building which is actually right at the entrance. So this is our last building of the day. This building houses the different jellyfish along with seahorses and a touch tank. And here is the Ray touch tank. So we just finished the whole aquarium. A little under two hours to like really go through everything and spend time with all the, the polar bears and the foxes and I recommend it. It's a nice stop in the winter or summer. Exploring Quebec, Canada in the winter was a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Join us next week for our next adventure.